Good afternoon. Thank you once again for joining me. Julian Campbell here. But right now we're going to have a chat with uh, Cathy Thompson from Markey Insurance. Good afternoon, Cathy. Good afternoon, Julian. So uh, earlier this year we touched on some of the insurances issues that arose around the April storms. And as you know, the Hunter region experienced the most severe conditions it's seen since 2007. And the damage and overall effect on businesses was varied and widespread. These days it seems like it's not a matter of if we are affected by a severe storm, but when? Yeah, hi, Julie. Yes, it seems like these events are happening on a regular basis around the country. We have many insurance claims still outstanding, and there's a number of reasons for that. So, so what are some of the most important lessons we can learn from these events? Well, there's always lessons we can learn from these events so that their impact is not as devastating next time. Unfortunately, we can't control the frequency or severity of natural disasters, but they do serve as a reminder to review disaster recovery, contingency and risk management plans within the business. It's important to also remember that these plans are not set and forget and should be reviewed regularly to ensure that they remain relevant and effective. Risk, after all, is something that all businesses face and it's important to identify and rate and quantify those risks so that we can set adequate plans to deal with them. Yes, yeah, important, isn't it, to be able to quantify those, those risks. What are some of the key yeah. recommendations to storm-proof your business? Well, the first one, and the most important one, is to appreciate how important your insurance policy is to the survival of your business. It's, in fact, one of the most important contracts that you will ever enter into in your business. So you've got to pay it some attention. Make sure it works for you and not against you when a major event occurs. Another key recommendation is, and it's often overlooked, and that's a, a disaster recovery plan. And that should address issues such as, you know, can you take up a temporary premises somewhere? Are there alternative suppliers of stock or business equipment? And a number of other specific strategies to help the business survive these disasters. So, so I suppose businesses would look at uh, things probably in general terms and say, well, if, you know, if our building was flooded or destroyed, what, what would we do? That's right. I mean, not all businesses can move. Some businesses mm. are in a particular location and they need to be in that location. So, you know, it's just not possible to obtain the premises they need and their customer, you know, base might be in that area. So there's lots of different issues they can face. And I suppose also it's important to read the fine print in your insurance policies because sometimes you, you may things are co think things are covered when they're not. Absolutely, and, and that's all about you know, paying this attention to your policy and, mm. and making sure you are fully aware of all of the conditions and so that they're not a rude shock when something does happen. Are, are there some specific insurance cover coverages that are often overlooked by business? Yes, well, one of the biggest ones is business interruption. And it's very important because it covers the resultant loss of business gross profit following an insured event such as a storm. So in most cases, the interruption will be a result of damage at the business premises, but there are other circumstances like a power outage or a damage at the premises of your supplier or your customer, which may also affect your business income. So business interruption insurance should be considered by most businesses and is often the key to surviving a major disaster. And it's obviously important to seek advice uh, early when a major loss occurs, isn't it? It is. Look, that's a very important point. <clears throat> your insurance advisor should be just as important to your business as your accountant or your lawyer. Their job is to work for the business and help out with these events. Um, the insurance advisor may also elect to appoint what's called a loss management specialist. And these people can work with the business from the outset and ensure that the policy entitlements are maximised and that the business can recover as quickly as possible. And if you buy a good quality insurance policy, then it may also cover the cost of the loss management consultant itself because they don't come cheap. And it's also important to remember that a widespread natural disaster often leads to a shortage of resources. So repairers, alternative suppliers can all be hard to source. So having the right advice and a disaster recovery plan from the word go can make a huge difference to how the business survives. And you mentioned earlier that there was quite a number of claims still outstanding from the, the April storms for, the, for these various reasons. 
That's right. I mean, there's such a limited availability of trades, and even um, people like carpet cleaners, you know, they were you know very very hard to find in the early days. Mm. And of course, fence fixers and roof fixers. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> very not, important. And of course, it's not just the the trades, as you say; it's also the resources, the the new tiles and and the components. Yes, and businesses can find that you know that becomes a major issue for them if they can trade through that, and and then you know maybe need to close later in order to have those repairs done then, you know, their insurance can work around that for them as well. And again, that, that that's where that possibly that business interruption comes in because it might be longer to get back on track than you thought it would. It, it, it would, and you can, you can lose business out of, out of mm. a major event if you can't um, complete the, the work in time or supply the product. Um, and the business interruption insurance can, can often work with that event and be there to, to help the business when they need it, even, even if it's not immediately. So, so what would be some final thoughts on that matter? Well, I think um, it's vitally important to review your insurance regularly and pay particular attention to the sums insured on the policy. At the end of the day, insurance is all about protection, not price, and it's more important to have the right cover and the correct levels of cover than to pay the, previous, the cheapest premium that you can find. It's also worth knowing what we mentioned before, it, that, of, of what the insurance doesn't cover. So for example, flood is not a standard cover in all insurance policies, and it continues to cause issues when we have a major storm event. It's also advisable to revisit your insurance coverage at least once a year, or more often, if there are changes to the business. So things such as moving to another premises, a merger with another business, winning a major contract, or your business activities change, all might need that you need to revisit your insurance. Mm. And, you know, a, an important word to business owners, don't delegate important insurance decisions to employees. You always keep in touch with your insurance coverage and make yourself available to review your cover and always make the final call and, and final decisions on insurance coverages. So, so do you find that a lot, that people do uh, delegate to someone else in the organisation? Look, we can find that. And, I mean, business people are, are very busy. Mm. Um, and, you know, we might, we might go out on an appointment and, and, um, and we'll, you know, have a general conversation with the business owner and then, you know, they might say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm quite busy today. I don't really have time to see you, but my office manager's going to... Um, she's going to take care of the insurance for you today. Um, that office manager may not be fully across all business operations. Um, and having that conversation with the business owner, we often find out little gems of information that then, you know, uh, you know, prick up our ears and we go, oh, well, I need to know more about that. Mm. There's something in there that the business owner doesn't realise is important for me to know. And then we can go from there and, and get some information. Right. Well, thanks very much for your time, Cathy. We'll have a chat with you again another time. Thanks, Julian.